In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to install WordPress 3.0 and then how to take that install and set it up as a multi-blogging site. With the release of WordPress 3, WordPress combined WordPress MU and the single install of WordPress. So now you can download WordPress, use it as a single blog, or if you want, you can install the networking feature and use that single install to create several blogs. So I'm going to demonstrate how to do that using a, an account at Bluehost and I'm going to go through this rather quick so if you need to you can stop the video and follow along. Uh, what I have here is the home page of an account I'm going to use. I don't have really anything on the account just an index page saying that the site's being built. Uh, we're going to download WordPress. I'll go ahead and do that. A fresh copy of 3.0. You might want to go ahead and go to the WordPress codex and get to the create a network. Uh, there's some directions there. I'm not going to go through this in detail, but it talks about server requirements and some information before you begin and so forth. So you may want to scan through that, especially if you have any problems following along with this video. And then I'm going to log into my cPanel account at Bluehost. Now you can do this on virtually any hosting account that you have, uh, but I'm going to use Bluehost to demonstrate using cPanel. Uh, I'm going to transfer everything through cPanel and edit through cPanel, but if you have an FTP account, you can do FTP as well. So the first thing I'm going to do on my site here is go to my file manager and upload the WordPress code. I'm going to go to public HTML. You'll see I don't have really anything here. I just have this index file that uh, is showing the site being built and that's all that I have. Uh, one thing that you need to do if you're installing this on an existing site is make sure that you back everything up. So if you have data on that site that you don't want to lose, back everything up first. Uh, you can do that easily just by coming in here, selecting all, uh, compress it into a zip file. I'll just do it real quick here. Maybe just go in and get yourself a tar file. Click compress and then download that tar file to your computer or move it outside of public HTML here somewhere so that you have a complete backup of your site. Uh, once you're comfortable, your site's backed up, then you can go ahead and go through the install process. So I'm going to upload the copy of WordPress that I downloaded. Once I have it uploaded, I'll reload so that I see. I'll extract. And all I'm doing here is just a basic WordPress install. The same thing you would do if you were installing a single version of WordPress. So I'm going to extract it in public HTML. And once it's extracted, I'll delete the zip. I no longer need it and now there's my WordPress. Now for this to work we need to have WordPress running in the root directory so I'm going to click on WordPress here and move all the files in the WordPress folder out to root. So I'm just going to select all and then take them and drag them out to public HTML. Now this is where you need to be careful if you have other things on your site that you don't overwrite existing programs you may have. There's my public HTML and all of my WordPress files in root now. If I click on WordPress, I'm just doing that to make sure there are no other files in that directory. They've all been moved out to root. Now I can delete the WordPress directory. I don't need that any longer. So all my files in root are in root. Now one thing I have here, if you notice, I had that index.html file out there and WordPress has an index.php index file. Uh, you want to make sure that you only have one index file or default file in your directories. Uh, here I'll have a sort of a competing index file here and it just depends on how your server is configured as to which one uh, will be detected. So you only want one index file out there. I'm just going to take my index.html file and uh, rename it. I could delete it but I'm just going to rename it. Just put back on the end and that'll sort of back it up in place uh, so that now I only have that one index.php file sitting out there. So I'm not going to have any problems with web browsers recognizing which file is my actual index file. So I have my source code up, so now I need to set up my database. I'm going to go back to my cPanel, go down to my SQL databases, and create a database. I'll just call this database WordPress. I'm being real creative there. Click Create Database. Now my database is set up. I've got to put a user in that database and then give that user all rights. So I'll scroll on down below and I'm going to create a new user. So I'm creating the user Figaro. I'm going to generate a password and copy that password out. Make sure you save that password. If you don't, then you're going to be stuck with having to go in and delete that user and create another one. Let your cPanel generate your password. 
save it, and then use it. And that way you'll know it's a good strong password. And click Create User. The last thing I need to do then for my databases is add the user Figaro to the database WordPress that I just created. So I'm going to click Add, Grant All Privileges, Make Changes. Now I have a database set up that's called this with a user and the user has all privileges to the database. Uh, while I'm here, before I copy other things, I usually just open an instance of Notepad or something and I paste that database password in it and then I'll go ahead while I'm here and copy my database name and paste it here. That way I'll have it later when I need it. And so now I have everything set up and I should be able to go out to my website now and refresh and it'll recognize that WordPress is there ready to be installed and configured. So I'm going to click create the configuration file. Let's go. My database name, that's where I'll go back to that notepad. I'll fill in my database name. My database username was the same prefix, we set Figaro on the end. Password, we copied that into a safe place. And we'll leave localhost. If you're on a different serv uh, if you're on a different provider, then your database host may or may not be localhost. Uh, so you'll need to know what that is. And then table prefix. Just for a little extra security, you may just want to change that to something different. And then click Submit. Run the install. Title your site. I would change the username from admin, make it something else that just adds to security. Uh, for purposes here, just so I can remember it, I'm going to leave it admin. But, and then set a password for your site. Email address here and install. We're installed. Now we can log into our site. And at this point, we have a working single install of WordPress. While I'm here, I'll just handle any updates that may be there. This is just the Kismet. So we'll update that plugin. Now we have a good running single install of WordPress. So now we want to take this and turn it into a WordPress multi-user site. So we're going to go back now and look at this create a network and scroll down. We're going to set this up to work in subdirectories, not subdomains. Uh, but if you want to do subdomains, come here and read the directions. And the first thing that we're going to do is grab this here, allow multi-site, to put in our config file. We'll go back out to file manager, scroll down, let me reload here to make sure we have the latest stuff. Scroll down and find our PHP config file that was created, edit it, and then go down and I'm just going to go here below this uh, DB collate line and add that line in and save it. Now if we go back to our site and go to tools, now we should see a networking setting in there. Uh, adding that line in config makes network appear here. So click on network, uh, read the information here, uh, we're going to do subdirectories, and it'll probably have everything filled in for you properly here. If not, change whatever you want, and then click install. Then it's going to give you some more code that we need to go back and add to our config file and to our HT access file. Read the directions, but the bottom line, this first part here, needs to go in that config file. So I'm going to copy that out, go back out to file manager, we'll edit config again, and I'll just go down below where I added the last line and paste in that code and save changes. I go back now get the other information that we need to paste into our HT access file and we're going to replace anything else that you had in there for WordPress. If you're doing a new install there's probably nothing in there. Uh, so we'll go back to config our HT access file and root check edit it and here you see there's nothing there begin WordPress in WordPress there's nothing in between uh, so I'll just put it here you could put it anywhere doesn't really matter and save so now that we have this information in notice it says down here we'll have to log in again notice if I were to try to go back out to my site I do but it's logged me out so now I gotta log back into my site now I should see a super admin area over on the left a couple of other things that we need to do though Let's go down and it tells us here that we need to create a blogs directory in WP content. This is where all upload files for your individual blogs that are created is going to be. So it needs to be blogs.dir in the WP, WP content. So we come back here, we go into WP content and create a new directory here called blogs.dir. 
and then that should be it. Now we should be able to go to our site and log in. We still have our main site here. This tutorial isn't really to show you how to actually use multi-user uh, site. It just shows you how to get it configured. But this is the main blog as it always is. Uh, when you go to site admin now, uh, you have your dashboard, everything down here to manage your blog, but then you have a super admin area up here to administer the network of sites. So if you want to take care of this warning for the default theme, for example, just go to the options page and enable uploads on this theme. Just click by images and any others that you want and click save. And that will get rid of that, but that's the options in your super admin area. Again, there's several things. You'll just need to go through and go down and look through all of that if you're not familiar with it. Basically, now to add blogs to your network, you can just click on sites. You could come down here, and I'll just type in Johnny, for example. I'm creating a blog on my site uh, at my web address slash Johnny. Site title, add site, and now I've just manually added a additional blog to my site. And of course, you can configure these so that other users can add them and so forth. But if I go back to my site now, this is my main site. If I were to come up and do Johnny, now I have a second blog at Johnny. This should get you started with the basics on installing and configuring a multi-site. But don't let this fool you into thinking you can go get a shared hosting account and install WordPress MU and start creating hundreds of thousands of blogs. That's not going to happen. But if you do want to have something set up so that you can have two or three or even a dozen or two blogs then it should be able to handle that without a problem and it keeps you from having to install the source code four or five or six times for different blogs. You can just use the multi-blogging feature in here to set up several blogs for yourself.